So we've looked at the shapes of molecules, uh, such as uh, bent or V-shape and tetrahedral and linear. And now we're going to look at how the shapes affect the behavior of the chemicals we're talking about. Okay, so we're going to look at something called whether or not the molecule is polar or nonpolar. And we're going to look at the nature of the bonds between individual atoms. And we're also going to look at the overall polarity of a molecule. So it has something to do with the way molecules behave. So we're going to look at how molecules behave when they are exposed to a charged rod. All right? And this is going to explore this concept of polarity. So we're going to take a look at a video that's going to explore the behavior of two liquids. Okay, the liquid on the left is carbon tetrachloride, and the liquid on the right is H2O. So this is carbon tetrachloride. You can see it's tetrahedral in nature. And she's going to put this molecule in the glass cylinder on the left, and she's going to explore how carbon tetrachloride behaves when exposed to a charged rod. So there's the rod. She's going to rub it full of rabbit fur. That allows it to have a negative charge. And she's going to place that negative charge beside the stream of carbon tetrachloride, which was tetrahedral. So when she puts the rod beside the stream, you're going to see what happens. Right beside the stream, and a close-up of it, you can see relatively nothing is happening to that stream. So when you put a charged rod beside carbon tetrachloride, nothing really happens. Right? Now we're going to explore the difference between looking at how the charged rod behaves with H2O, which we know is bent or V-shaped. So the cylinder on the right is going to contain water, and she's going to put the charged rod right beside the water as well. So same thing, I'm going to take a charged rod, place it beside the stream of water, and see what happens to the water. Notice it's bending. Okay, the behavior of the molecule is very different. And it's the shape of the molecule that allows it to behave in a different way. So here we have water. Uh, water, we know, is bent or V-shaped. And if we look at the electronegativity difference between the two types of atoms, oxygen's electronegativity is high at around 3, and hydrogen is lower around 2. Because of that, the electrons get pulled really tight to the nucleus. You can see they're really close around oxygen, leaving hydrogen only a proton all by itself, its electron is being shared close to the oxygen nucleus. That means hydrogen we call slightly or partially positive. And the symbol that you see here represents a partial or slight charge. And it really looks like an eight that isn't finished. We see hydrogen is slightly positive. It's not a true ionic positive, it's just slightly positive. On the other side, we have oxygen. The, the electrons are closer to oxygen so we say that oxygen is slightly negative. Okay, this is opposites. And since we have the opposites in this molecule, we say this molecule is polar. And remember, polar is like your North Pole and your South Pole. We have opposite attracts. So we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail. We're going to look at how we consider the bonds to be polar and how we consider the molecule to be polar. So how does a polar molecule behave? Well, if this is the example of the charged rod on the right, you can see it's carrying a negative charge. And you place the water that we saw in the video beside the charged rod. As you place it beside, it forces the water molecules to become attracted to it, and they will align themselves so that opposites attract. So the positive parts of the water molecule will attract to the charged rods. Okay? And that's why you see a bending. You see a bending towards as the positive parts of the molecule attract to the negative rod. So this is a demonstrating a polar molecule. And the next podcast will look at how do you decide if a molecule is polar.